All right, guys, now we're going to go over the basic setup when you arrive at your campsite and the three lifelines that every RV requires when hooking up. Uh, the three lifelines are going to be sewer, electric, and water. First thing we're going to go over is how to hook up to sewer. Uh, this is going to be your discharge. There's two types of tanks in every RV. You have a black water holding tank and a gray water holding tank. Black handle for black water, gray handle for gray water. Black water is straight down the toilet only. That's the bad stuff. Gray water is going to be the sink and shower collection. That's the not so bad stuff. So when we're ready to discharge and we're at our campsite, we're going to see a three inch clean out in the ground. This will be screwed into the three inch clean out. We'll remove our cap. You're going to find your hose in the compartment hooked end to end. When you're done for the day uh, from discharging, you want to hook this back up end to end so you don't have any kind of leak out in the compartment. You're going to find a female and a male bayonet fitting. The female is going to attach to the uh, discharge on the trailer. The male is going to actually be hooked up into the uh, sewer discharge that you have uh, screwed into the clean out. So that guy will go in there. I'm going to triple check this, make sure everything's nice and tight and secure before I go and do any kind of discharge. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the black handle. It's a three, uh, about a three inch pull on the bayonet fitting here and the blade valve. So I'm gonna pull this out away from the, uh, from the discharge. That's gonna uh, let all of the black water run out. Once you see the black water is done flowing, I would shut the black handle. I'd come over and pull the gray handle second. One rule of thumb is gonna be you never wanna have both tanks open at the same time. It can cause cross contamination. Second thing, when you're at a campsite, you're going to actually leave your black water closed. You can leave your gray water to discharge the shower uh, collection, everything like that. But black water should only be open once every couple of days. There's a monitor panel inside that will show you the tank levels. Once you see that the tanks are being uh, filled, that's when you want to discharge that black every couple of days. When I'm done, I'm going to disconnect this guy right here. I'm going to hook end to end on this sewer. And I'm going to place this back into my uh, compartment over there cap goes back on and you're ready to roll again. Second thing we're going to go over is going to be electric. You have a 30 amp 120 volt AC power supply to this trailer. 90 degree yellow socket and cord are going to go together right here. You have a collar that you can actually tighten down to make it weatherproof. The other end is going to go into the uh, socket at your campsite pole. So I would then plug this into the campsite pole. I'm gonna check my breaker at the campsite because a lot of times the vacant campsites will have the breakers turned down. Once I know that this is secure, this is plugged in properly, I would then turn the breaker on and that would activate all of your household appliances inside for 120 volt power. Third thing we're gonna go over is gonna be water. That's gonna be right here. There's two ways to supply water to every RV. First way is gonna be filling the potable water holding tank that's built into the trailer or motorhome. That's gonna be 50 gallons on board. I would jam this into this gravity fill right here. I would go and turn the spigot on and I would actually fill this up till it overflows or you can check the monitor panel inside when it starts reading full. I would then pull it out and replace the cap. And my water is filled back up. There's a water pump on board that will draw from this holding tank and you pressurize the system just as if you were hooked into city water connection. If you have the benefit of being at a campsite or at a house that has a city water connection, you can use the same white drinking hose. It's white so it doesn't give you that rubbery taste when you're brushing your teeth. This guy will get hooked in right here, nice and tight, just to make sure it doesn't leak. I would then walk over to the faucet and turn it on. That's going to pressurize all of your water lines upstairs and it's not going to fill any kind of holding tanks. Outdoor shower here. Something else we want to go over is the black tank flush. Something we want to keep our customers away from. This is just for our team to use on return. Uh, this is actually how we sanitize the holding tanks. Never want to hook up to this thinking this is a city water connection. This is going to fill the black tank up with fresh water and possibly overflow. We don't want to do that. So this is a big no-no. The last thing we're going to go over is going to be your leveling procedures of when you get to the campsite. If you're in a travel trailer, you're going to find there's going to be a, uh, some Lynx leveler blocks that if we are listing one way or the other, we can actually drive the rear wheels up onto these blocks to level side to side. We never want to try to use the stabilizer jacks to level the vehicle side to side. So as I arrive at the campsite, I'm going to disconnect my truck. I'm going to level front to back with the uh, power tongue jack on front. And then I'm going to actually uh, make sure level side to side with our uh, Lynx leveler blocks. Third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run our stabilizer jacks down. So then I would take this guy right here. I would run this down until it hits the ground. Two or three turns at the most after you hit the ground, 
over tightening these onto the ground can actually cause damage to them. Uh, so you want to be very careful with that. Here we have it guys. This is going to be our campsite hookup. Sewer, tower, water. 